Hi everyone, thank you for tuning in. Today we are with the founder of Chefin, Petco. Petco, thank you for joining me today. My pleasure. Thanks for having me. Brilliant. Now, Petco, it would be great if you could tell our viewers a bit of an executive summary about Chefin. Yeah, sure. So, Chefin is a private chef marketplace. We started in 2015 and we've built up a software very similar to Uber. We have that mar marketplace style software that actually allows transactions and we assign the chefs to the actual transaction to execute with the customer. So it's a bit different from the Airbnb style businesses where uh, people can list, um, say, their property or their services, they can define the price, etc. And then the consumer goes and actually purchases based on which price is cheaper or based on which one they actually like, etc. We provide the Uber style service where you go on our app and you say, hey, I want to have a private chef for an anniversary dinner with my wife. Yeah and this is how much it's gonna cost, this is the package, these are the inclusions, pay. And then once you do that, you basically get assigned a chef, you can actually reject the chef if you want to, but in around 99% of the cases, we yeah. get people actually accepting the chef and going ahead with the booking because the chef proposes a menu for them, organizes everything custom based on their dietaries, preferences, etc. then shops fresh, cooks, or sort of delivers to their home actually, cooks, serves them everything fresh on site and then even cleans up after. So people even say sometimes that the kitchen is cleaner after the chef than before. <laughs> Amazing. <laughs> oh my gosh. Fun. That sounds easy enough for sure. And now can you also tell us how does Chef and actually differentiate between other meal delivery services that we have in the market? Yeah, so we're actually quite allergic to meal deliveries in catering. Mm -hmm. We don't like people calling us a catering or meal delivery service because we don't do that. We actually right. provide an out of dining experience. Yes. So market is actually quite fractured at the moment you have like the uber eats yes. you have the deliveries which sort of went under in australia right yeah. and you've got a lot of quite funky asian delivery apps which is uh -huh. quite interesting they specialize just in the asian market in particular yes. in the chinese uh -huh. uh, but i'm sure that there'll be others popping up in other spaces like say indian cuisines or yes. southeast asians etc because yeah. the consumers are really really picky on the flavors and they want to eat they're sort of yes. national foods. Yes. Um, and you've got these guys from Provido in Melbourne that are actually doing high-end restaurants delivery. Yeah. Um, so how we differentiate, we actually started the Provido style service, which was uh, packed meals that are ready to serve in five minutes. Right. Uh, so the chef would pack up the ingredients in different reusable silicone bags, and then the customer would take them out, say, warm up the salmon for five minutes, and then plate it up on the plate. So we did something like that during COVID, and it was very popular. But since COVID, people actually prefer someone to come and cook for them. Since COVID is over, right. and obviously that was the service we did before COVID anyway, so we're actually not doing any of this pre-packed stuff anymore. We actually just do dining experiences where the chef goes and cooks for people. Um, then if you order takeaway, obviously you get something that's being cooked at a certain point throughout the day. You don't care that much about the flavor, you yeah. just care about the price and having food. Absolutely. Moving on with your day. So it depends yeah. what the preferences are for people. Uh, something that I mentioned yesterday in my presentation, we're in that yeah. access economy. People want to access things. So they can Very choose true. how they want to access dining and hospitality. That's their own choice. But in the future, there will be that distinguishment of the market where on the top end, you have the chef and dining yes. experience yes. where people either go to restaurants like the premium top end restaurants like Key or the Rockpool yeah. or they order a private chef to go into their home. And then you have the bottom of the market where people would eat mostly like vegan proteins they will have access to uh, lab produced meats and other things yeah. which are not so much of an interest to the organic and the top end of the market that want freshly caught seafood organic farm like sustainably grown biodynamic grown like yes. fruits vegetables and meats as well definitely now uh, for my next question it would be love uh, it would be great for our audience to know that uh, what has been any milestones that you know that you've achieved so far and also what does the outlook look like for you in the next two to three years any um, highlights that you would share with us yeah something that's been like really really exciting for us is being able to expand nationally and horizontally across australia yes. so we have covered the whole market at the moment in every city yeah. and we even go to places like kalgori which is really in the middle of nowhere but we're sending chefs there uh, we're sending chefs to tasmania to launceston to queens uh, queenstown in tasmania as well anywhere our customers go we can actually send the chef yeah. um something we did back in 2018 19 yeah. which we're looking to start doing again is to actually work with producers to help them export into markets like china so in 2019 we did like a huge conference for example in china in changsha where we exported a container of beef a container of seafood and a container of oysters yeah. and we hosted the event with two of our celebrity chefs there 
uh, which was amazing. So we're looking at doing more stuff in China at the moment. We're working with a couple of partners there. And we started already expanding horizontally into like Singapore, Hong Kong, and also into the US. Um, heading into Texas first and then a little bit in California, obviously, like everyone else, right? That but we want to be a bit different, so that's why we started with Texas, with Houston and Austin. Amazing. Now, uh, see, Chefin has been uh, like a, a, one of our esteemed sponsors for Emergence 2023. Since the beginning as well. Absolutely. Beginning of Emergence. <laughs> oh my gosh. And we have got to try your food firsthand. So it would be great if you could share with us, like all the people that we have here with us today have been trying the food. So any uh, feedback that you have regarding the conference like how have you found it any comments that you've received yeah i think the chefs were really sweating yesterday at lunch it was crazy everyone was like just gathering in to eat all the kingfish and the salmon yeah. today we've got plenty of prawns so guys come in nice. it's awesome <laughs> uh we had some really nice sydney rock oysters from port stevens as well yesterday uh, i think everyone's been really enjoying the vip rooms catering yeah. uh, but obviously i'm biased <laughs> from that perspective um but in general i think the conference is amazing i've been attending for since the beginning we've worked with steve on these yeah. conferences uh we even met our first initial investor our lead investor in one of the emergence conferences oh, back brilliant. in 2018 i believe it was wow. or 2019 yeah. yeah so that was really amazing as well um so at the moment we are not raising but next year we'll probably be looking at raising again which would be which would be awesome brilliant well thank you so much petko for having this chat Pleasure. and for all our viewers who are interested in speak with speaking with the team at chefin we will have the details at the side of the screen or in the description thank you for tuning in awesome. and thank you so thanks much thanks for petko. having me thank you, thank you.